So the main goal for me today anyway, is just to get you to a point that if you were to walk into a pharmacy that is using touch door, and now it's getting very likely that that is the case, um, that you will be able to dispense away no problem at all and be able to handle daily tasks like your uh, your daily audit and all different types of dispensings, whether that be owings and loans and phases and so on. Um, so just I'll jump in. So the first screen you're looking at here, I hope everyone can see that okay. This is a screen that is the same throughout every customer who has touch door. So, um, and this is our home screen. So when you first open the application, this is what you'll be greeted with. And the icon just looks like this and it'll be the same on everyone. So double clicking on it will let you log in. You'll then be asked for a pin and usually there's a universal locum pin, but the shop will definitely let you know that. There's a couple of tabs here um, I wouldn't worry too much about. Uh, there's things like open support tickets, when your last online backup was, because we are a cloud-based dispensary system, this happens nightly automatically that you don't need to do anything. And then your service level agreements at the bottom, if you are ever, ever getting a PSI inspection, that's where they are. But to jump to a blank patient file and to start dispensing, we just press the start button here, and that'll bring us to a blank file. And as you can see in the top there, there's a cursor flashing, and that just means if we start typing out a patient's name, we can then jump to that patient's file. So for example, if I search for myself, I do surname, comma, and last name, and you can see there that I'm showing up. And be as brief as you want as well. So if I just did W, comma, and Peter, I am also showing there. And then a few other things you might see in the search at the top is uh, you will see this symbol, popping up if it'll come up for me that percent sign that is just our wildcard it's nothing that i have pressed or it's nothing that you have pressed by mistake that just covers whether somebody created an o'brien with a space an apostrophe a hyphen whatever way they created the percent sign covers them all and you will see it popping up for certain things uh, randomly but um, if i was to search for someone and they don't show on the list so if i look for touch store test you can see that there's no one showing so they're not a patient here. As soon as I press enter to try and go onto that patient's file, it asks me, do I want to create a new patient? Another way of doing that is if you see the icon over here, there's a plus next to that patient icon, that lets you do the exact same thing. So if you know from looking at the prescription yourself that they're new and you need to create a new person, that is how you'd go about it without having to type out the name. Now, the search up here in the top is your recent search, so it only shows you the last six months of patients, whereas if you want to see way further back, um, there is an advanced search option in the bottom left down here. Now, the application itself is keyboard driven and mouse driven, so there's personal preference for yourself. We will leave shortcuts throughout the application, so if you see F2 up here, if the cursor isn't flashing up here, F2 will bring your cursor up there, or you can just use your mouse and click there. Um, the advanced search as well, just you click down here and it'll bring it up for you. Or if you press F2 twice on your keyboard, it brings up the exact same screen. So it's just personal preference for yourself. The keyboard will always be quicker in the long run, but again, it's up to yourselves. So if I go to advanced search, it'll just be handy. Uh, here just to show you a few examples because at the top here the only thing you can search for is the name so in the bottom left here i click on my search and under filters i have a few handy ones so all patients is every patient in the system last 10 would be the last 10 patients i had open on this computer so if you had multiple dispensaries the last 10 would differ between different computers and there are a ton of other tabs here that you may or may not use, but we do set them up um, on the day that you get the system and we go through them with you because you may not need MDS um, or those are veterinary patients or those kind of things. So it's just to tidy it up, really. Um, the middle tab, then, you can use the two top ones here. Scheme and uh, reference number is great for looking for patient card numbers. Dispense script form number is very handy when you're verifying and you need to double check a form. But the one that's widely used here is product dispensed. So if I, for example, put in a control drug in here, um, now did I actually dispense this is the question? I didn't, okay. I know that Warfin was dispensed, so I'll just have a quick look for that. Warfin one milligram and search. And it will show you all of the patients that are on that drug. So for example, if you dispense the control drug in the morning, you can't remember for the life of you who it went to. You can type in the control drug at the top and search. 
and you can be as brief as you want. You don't need to specify dates or anything like that, and it'll show you everybody that's on it. If the list is a bit too comprehensive, then you can filter it down by loans, owings, phases, and dispense dates. To jump to the file then, all you do is just double click on whichever record is showing up for you. So then the final tab at the top here, multi-field, is for your address, telephone number, and so on. So if you are looking for a family, you know their surname, you could put that in here and everybody will show. Um, or you can put in just be as brief as you want with the address. You can put in three as let's say there, you know that they live in apartment three. You could just put three apartment and then everybody with that in their address will show. Uh, so I'll jump out of here. So I'm just going to create a patient just for this example. So I'm just going to create a touch door test patient. So we'll assume a script has come in for this patient and they're not in the system. And we can tell straight away because I don't have anyone showing in my records. So as soon as I press enter, it asks me, do I wish to create them? So I'm going to say yes. And it has already populated with what I've just typed in there. So usually with this screen, you'll read left to right. So we'll start with the name. So first name and surname will have already been typed. If I press that plus icon next to the patient here, it will not have any of this in there. So you will have to type it. Um, in some pharmacies, you may see something in middle name with brackets and then G7 or M, something like that. That's just where the script is usually filed away just to help you out. And it will show in the patient information. Um, and for this example, actually, I will, I'll just do it here to show you. Um, known as as well, not really too widely used. I'm not going to go through too much of this. Your date of birth, um, you don't need to populate if they have a valid card number because we will automatically pull that information in from the PCRS for you. If you ever see this ticked DS, that just means that the patient is deceased. And if you hover over it, we'll usually pop up and tell you what it is. Um, your address then, you can enter that in here and then telephone numbers and so on. Now, on the right hand side, you have a lot of tabs at the top here. I will go through a few of them as we go through the training session, but details is the main one you want to concern yourself with when you're accessing a patient's file. So this will have all your scheme details, their doctor and so on. So as we can see here, I have no scheme, but if I want to add one, I can just click into the blank space or I can press insert scheme and that just creates a blank row. So I'm going to give this patient drug refund or private. If I wanted to add more schemes, so let's say they were DPS and LTI or GMS and high tech, I could just press insert and it adds more rows to it. So I will, I'll give this patient GMS as well, just to be on the safe side. And I'll just put in an example card number. You wouldn't have to put the month or the year in again, because we pull the information from the PCRS. As long as the card number is valid, we will pull all that information in on the next screen for you. Now, unfortunately, I won't be able to show you that because I don't have a GMS. Um, cert on this computer. So then down to our defaults. Defaults are when I go into this patient's file, what do I want it to default to? So what's the main scheme? So for example, if they were drug refund, but now they're in a hospital, you could switch this to hospital emergency or so that if somebody goes in to put through a brand new prescription, it'll always assume it is hospital emergency. Uh, the doctor then, so doctors, you can search the same way you do for patients. So surname, comma, first name, or you can use the doctor code. So if I use 61559, there's a couple of hospitals popping up. Whereas if I use my local doctor's surname, if I spelt it right, it might help. Uh, and there you go. So there's my local doctor showing. So I'm just gonna click them there. If you find that you're searching for a doctor and they are not showing on the list, the doctor maintenance screen is in this little cog here. And I will show you again, it pops up on another screen here as well, just in case you forget it at this point. But that just, this screen here will pop up for you if you need to add a doctor or adjust the doctor. If you find that you're searching for the GMS code and they're not popping up, you can always make changes to your doctor in here. Now I will go through that in a little more detail later on. And then the drug label and bag label you can ignore for now. That's primarily used for us just in case. Okay, now, so down the bottom then, if you're happy with everything, you can press OK and the patient is created. Cancel will just get rid of everything we've worked on so far and delete will delete the patient. Now, you can only delete patients who have no history on their file, so no dispenses. 
Um, if you find that people are still picking the wrong one and you can't delete it or something like that, you could merge the two patients together if you did have two records for the same person or marking them as deceased removes them from the search. So there are ways around it. But if you're happy with everything, we just press OK. And provided that we're not missing any details, the patient will be created. Now, what could I be missing? Um, if you have a certain scheme, hardship or something like that, and you require a PPS number, we will warn you when you press OK that you're missing a PPS number and this is why. And wherever the cursor lands after, so if you see up here, if it lands here, this is where the problem is. So it'll try and give you hints as to where the issue is. But I shouldn't have any pop-ups for this patient when I press OK. So in the top left there, there's the information we entered, touched our test, and then that M12, which you may see in certain pharmacies, and just where the prescription is filed. Um, date of birth and age would have pulled in correctly if the card number for GMS was valid. But as you can see, I have no color popping up. And while I'm on that topic, I will just explain the colors. So how do we tell if a card number is valid? Is we flash up different colors here to let you know. So green means everything's okay. Yellow means that there's more information on the PCRS portal and double clicking on the GMS number here will bring in that information for you or show you what it is. And it's usually just a change of expiry or something like that. Uh, red then means something is wrong and you will get a detailed message underneath here to let you know what is wrong. Usually card expired or patient details not found. And then the other color you will see only for GMS is purple. And that is a GP visit card and will actually pop up on the screen and tell you this is a GP visit card only just in case that color is missed. And then as you can see above that is my doctor that I had said was my default doctor. On the right hand side, we have notes. So if you wanted to write in a note like son has paid for a prescription or something along those lines, um, it saves as you're typing. You don't need to press save. So as soon as I come out of that, it has automatically saved what I've typed in there. Now the notes will just sit there. They will not pop up or, or not flag up anything like that. If you wanted something to pop up when you go into a patient's file, that is warnings, the next tab over. And to create a warning, you just click in your blank space and then you type out what you want to pop up on the screen. So it's just if you do want to stop someone dead in their tracks when they're going into a patient's file and say, look, this patient will only take a certain brand and you really need to drill that home to them, then I would go with warnings because they will have to press OK to say that they have agreed to the warning. So um, I'll go through the buttons at the bottom here now. So we've already gone through the search. The view button will allow us to look at a prescription that has been put through without having to edit it and then complete it. View just lets us look like if we needed to see a long dosage, for example, which we can't see first glance from looking at the screen here. The view will allow us to look at that. View scan is for scanning prescriptions. I don't have a scanner attached to this, so unfortunately cannot show that. History, so by default, we will show you a years of dispense history on the patient's file. It's just to keep things quick and snappy because if the patient was with you for five years, we don't want to try and load five years of dispensing data every time you open somebody's file. So what this history button does is it will load that full five years if you need to see anything back that far but always we will just load the last year. If you need to see anything outside of that, just press the history button. Um, my receipt bag and label, the reason why they are a darker color is because I don't have a label printer attached to this computer, but they will normally be the same color as these buttons. And what they allow you to do is just reprint. Um, so if you ever needed multiple bags, if you're sending out blisters, you can just press bag, bag, bag on the prescription that you need. Edit will allow me to edit a prescription that I have put through and make changes. If I figured that I've done made a mistake, put through the wrong quantity or put through the wrong brand, this button will allow me to edit a prescription that I put through. New script is for a new script. Repeat will allow me to repeat an item and I will show you that in greater detail shortly. And then this repeat option will allow you to make changes before you say you are fully happy with the prescription. Whereas repeat and complete assumes that what you see on the screen in front of you is what you are happy with and it just flies off the prescription. And I will show you that um, in an example now with a patient with a bit more details. But to put through a new script for our brand new patient, I can press new script. Or if you prefer, um, 
as I mentioned earlier, it is keyboard driven. So, and it may be difficult for you to see at the moment, but there are lines underneath each of these letters. And all that means is the Alt key on your keyboard and that letter will do that function. So I can press new script here and it brings me to the new prescription screen, or I can press Alt and I on my keyboard and it does the same thing. So again, personal preference, a lot of our application with the straight lines underneath it just means that Alt and that letter will do that function. So if I go new script, very like our patient search, it will bring you to a recently dispensed search. Um, this will just make it much easier for selecting the correct brands and things like that. Um, so if I type in Warfin, for example, they're my most commonly dispensed Warfins that are showing up. But if I just backspace that, and you can see it's actually giving me a message here, can't find a product, hit F8, and it will jump to active products. And you'll see at the top here, active products has F8 next to it. So if I press F8, it has now jumped over. And this is great for things like if there's a ULM that you don't normally dispense, but you do have it in stock. If I now type in Warfin, you can see I've got a few other options showing here. They're just not recently dispensed, but I can still 100% dispense them. And that again was just my active products, which is basically showing you everything in the IPU file. You do have further lists here. So if you know the generic or the brand, you can search by those also. And how you get to them is just keep pressing F8 and the button will jump across but it will always bring you to recent. So if I type in Warfin, I can use my up and down arrows to jump between the items, or I can use my mouse. It's really personal preference again. And I just press enter or click on the item that I want. It will then jump to the dispense quantity. So enter will bring me down to prescribed. And then enter again brings me down to my dosage. So the workflow here is just enter, 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 and it just brings you down through. The dosage codes should all be fairly um, the same throughout all three systems but if you find that there's a couple that are missing now i know penicillin is one that constantly changes between pharmacies whether it's pi ps or, or something along those lines but if you find one that is missing for you all you have to do is just double click in here where it says dosage and it allows you to create your own you can also search for ones that may be in there um, but if it's something like eye drops and you don't want to have to remember what the code is, you can just click down in directions, manually typing away. And you can jump between the two, so I could manually type there, and then I can jump back up here and do T1, and you can do a mixture if you want. It will remember it when you go to repeat it anyway. This example, I'm just gonna go as directed. So if I press enter then, so the workflow was I picked the drug, it landed and dispensed, I press enter, enter, put in my dosage, and enter one more time, has now put a box around the next key, basically saying, I am now waiting for another item. So if I say enter, the item we have worked on is at the top here, and your drug label would have printed for this. And now we're ready at the bottom here for another item. So a screen that you will see a lot, I'm just gonna pick a reference price product. This will pop up a fair bit for you. This is your product substitution screen. So if you're dispensing something that has alternative brands, and in this case, you also have the option to say that the doctor has said to not substitute the product or you need to substitute the product, your options for that at the top. So if you see here, and again, that's automatically triggered, this list is populated by the IPU. If you see product substitutions and we pull all that in for you. So the HC info, brand generic prescribed, if we were happy with this, we could just dispense away as normal. But if the patient had agreed to pay the supplement amount, if there is one due, I just tick patient has agreed to pay a supplement and it will show me if there is a supplement amount due. Now, if the doctor has written do not substitute from the drop down at the top, it is the second item down. And you'll notice that my option to say the patient has agreed to pay the supplement is now gone. But if I'm for this example, I'm just going to say brand generic. If you find that this is popping up constantly and the patient is always just taking a Torvastatin, they're never going with Lipitor, or you only ever stock the Pinewood brand, you're never going to get Myelantiva or Atavis or anything like that. You can pick, remember my answer, and it just stops the screen from popping up constantly. Now, if I tick this, does it mean I can't go back in? No, it doesn't. And I'll show you that now in a second. So if we were happy that we were going with the Pinewood Atorvastatin here, I can go with Dispense Current down here, or Alt and U because the line is underneath the U, 
or let's say I didn't have a torvastatin on the shelf, I actually have Lipitor, then I would be going with the alternative option or Alton A. And it just picks the option that we've highlighted here. But for this example, I'll just go with the current, which is always going to be the one that you've repeated from in history, um, just for that reference. So I go to Spence Current. There is my drug interaction, severe only. Um, I can print it if I need to. Select just shows us a bit more information about it because this is fairly brief. Um, and close just means we're happy with it. So now here we go, Torvastatin, my dispense, my prescribed. Now, what I mentioned earlier about I had, remember my answer ticked. Let's say I realized at this point, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Um, I actually need Lipitor. You can pick this reference price button down the bottom. That just jumps back to where we were and allows you to pick the other brands then if you do make a mistake. Um, so dispensed, I'm happy with 28. I'm happy with the prescribed quantity and I'm just gonna go as directed for the dosage again. Now, at this point, Let's say we're finished with the prescription. There was just two items, both GM, and we're happy with everything we see. I can just press complete or alt and M. That will then print your bag label and your form number will appear at the top of the screen. So GMS4. And now for GDPR purposes, we clear the screen so that if somebody was to come back into the dispensary, because usually at this point you're away bagging the items or FMD scanning them, um, we you, they will know that touch door test is a patient but they will have no idea what medication they're on so how to jump back to that patient it'll tell you up here previous patient press f10 on your keyboard and there we go and there is my prescription my warfarin my atorvastatin now the two buttons i mentioned earlier repeat repeat and complete i can show you the difference between them now so if i wanted to repeat that prescription i can use my up and down arrows on the keyboard to jump between the items like this and then enter on the ones that I want highlight them if it's something like a long prescription with 20 30 items and you don't want to keep doing down enter down enter down enter on your keyboard we do have a filter here in the top left called show our x's which splits it into form numbers rather than items so show items goes item by item which means that you'd have to do down and enter and tab through them Sure, X's means you just highlight the form number and everything under it is highlighted, which is very quick for regular patients. Um, but for this example, I will just do my down and enter because that'll probably be what you'll be doing. Now, if I go to repeat, it's going to give us one look at it before I say I'm happy with it. So let's say we have a look and we're happy with everything there and then you press complete and it runs it off again. Whereas if you know it's a regular patient, and you don't need to go back into that screen. Everything you see here, you're happy with. The price is perfect. The doctor is fine. Quantities are all okay. It's the same as last month. I can go show our X's. One click on the form. Repeat and complete or Alt and M. And that's it. The prescription is done. So for regular patients, it's very quick. And you can see then your GMS is six at the top. And that's it done. And you would get your drug labels and your bag labels to come out. If I realized I had made a mistake and I need to go back, I'm just gonna jump back to show items here. I can highlight the prescription and that's when my edit button comes into it. So if I want to edit this and let's say I realize there was actually six repeats on this and I forgot to add the repeats. That is where your maximum made and left come into play. Maximum being your total number of repeats, made being how many are done and then left is calculated from the difference. So if I put six, for example, and I'm doing one right now, that will look like one dash six on the PMR. Personal preference, again, I have seen people do five, zero and five. Again, it's completely up to you, whatever you're used to. But this is usually what we train on as it just looks the easiest. When you then repeat through it and two, three, four, and when you get to the end, then we'll give you a pop up to say the prescription has expired and to ask for a new prescription. Now, at this point, You'll notice I have two items and I'm adding repeats to only one of them. But let's say this is a 10 item script and I don't want to have to go down through each item and change the repeats. That is where the select all function in the bottom left here comes into play. That highlights everything in the prescription and we can change all of these items about them in one go. So for example, if we put through the prescription and then realize we don't have a script or a health mail still hasn't come through, we can then set everything on loan. 
we can change the scheme if we realize that we've made a mistake and they actually do have a valid card number and we had put it through as private and you can change the GMS doctor. Dispense date will allow you to forward date and that's how you would do it here. And we'll show an example of that shortly. But all you do is you just pick the date and the form will automatically change if you do change it into next month. We will then give you a little note in the bottom to let you know the original dispense date because if you were on the patient's file, all you're going to see is the forward dated date and you'd have no idea it was ever forward dated. So we leave a little note in the bottom to say, this is the date that it was originally dispensed. Um, and then your repeats here. So if I wanted to add repeats, let's say repeats made, we're, we're doing one right now, but there's six in the prescription. And you'll notice now repeats one dash six. You can change a couple of other things in here. So if the scheme was wrong, again, I can do it from the drop down. If something was on loan, I can just tick on loan. Or if I need to do it for everything, again, your select all will save you a ton of time there. Your phase and not dispense. Um, I'll come back to the phasing, but your not dispense is just a matter of ticking and then populating your reason, which is usually pre-populated for you. Um, OK, but let's say I'm happy now. I've made my changes, so I edited this prescription originally. I've made my changes, and now you can see the button is now recomplete and not complete because we have already got our form number for this. So I'm just recompleting what I've already done. And you'll see there is my change, 1-6. Okay. So just I'm going to jump to a uh, more populated patient file just to show you what it will look like. Um, so to jump to another patient and for people coming over from helix this is the hardest part to get used to you don't have to close out of this patient to jump to the next patient and your escape key will not do anything for you um, so to jump to a new patient i just type out again surname comma first name and you can be as brief as you want i'm just typing it out full here is peter white and i just either click or enter and that will load the patient's file for me now, if you notice here, alert warning has popped up, test warning. This is, I actually have information in warnings here, just so you can see what it looks like. So earlier on when I mentioned patient would only take a certain brand or something like that, or son has paid for prescription or something along those lines, or you could have that popping up here and they actually have to press okay to get out of it. So it's very hard to ignore. Whereas your notes will only take certain brand, just sit there. And if you see test warning, that's what popped up for me. If you find that people are still pressing OK, there is a tick box here called Conf Request, uh, which is just Confirm Request. And that means they have to enter their PIN to get out of it, uh, which can be a bit head wrecking. But it's, again, it's personal preference. Um, so if you see here, this patient's PMR is a bit more populated. And we've got a few more colors. So the yellow here, yellow means on loan. And another telltale sign that it's on loan is I have no form number. And I won't have a form number until the prescription comes in. How I then say, and you'll notice there in the bottom right as well, my little message. How do I give this a prescription or say that I have now received the prescription? You just highlight the item and repeat. We'll then ask you, do you want to complete it for the warfarin you've highlighted? Or if there was 20 items on loan, do you want to just complete them for all? And that then will complete the loan. Your green are owings, and you'll see the owed column is populated. And how to run off an owing is the very same as a loan. You just repeat and we'll ask you, do you want to ignore it and go to the next repeat or discharge the owings? And you know what? I will for this example just to show you because there may be some cases that you can only discharge a partial owing. Um, cancel just lets you go back, but I'm just going to discharge the owing for now. And you'll notice that it was 100 owed. So the system has assumed that it's 100 that we're giving them, but you can still do a partial quantity there if you need to. So I could still do 50. And you'll notice there, owed 50. And this euro symbol that's after popping up is basically asking you, do you want to charge them now or do you want to charge them when they come back? So the only time that that would never be ticked is if you notice, it automatically unticks when I have a zero quantity because I'm not physically handing them any tablets. So the patient may be a little weird about paying for something that they're not being given. Whereas as soon as I press one, automatically charges because I'm physically handing them stock. Um, but you can overwrite it yourself if you feel the need to. Um, but I'm just going to go with the full quantity here just to remove the owing so you can see. So I'm just going to complete that and jump back with F10 to that patient's file. There's my owing. And you can now see in the bottom, owed dispensed completed. 
So if I double click in there, it will let you know. So again, if there's anything that's hard to see, like your notes, if you had an absolute ton of them, just double click in, it'll bring it up on a bit easier to read screen. And it's the same for any notes that are down here in the bottom right. Um, your blue or your light blue here is your phased. And you'll see the phase column populated with 404 and also the reason why it was phased, request of physician. And then the pink color here is my not dispense and it'll tell you in the bottom as well your not dispense reason and this is just for my patient care fee as you can see with the high tech and my humera my high tech item okay so a few pop-ups that you will see throughout the application because there's a lot of stuff built into this so the pcrs circular rules are built into the background of this system just to help you out so if you're dispensing something that isn't covered under gm the system will warn you and tell you look we're going to switch this to drug refund this is why um, and for example here if you notice i have viagra dispensed um, now i've dispensed this in december and i've dispensed four so if i try and dispense another four in the same month if i repeat that and there's my alternative brand so cylindophil if i didn't have viagra um, but i'm just going to go with the current and if i try and complete that now you'll get a pop up here to say claim defender not allowed more than four times in one month the product so these are built into the background just in case you ever pressed repeat and complete and you didn't double check it or you just glanced over it. It will then pop up and say, look, these are the rules that the PCRS are saying that you need to follow. And these are the ones that it's breaking. We will never stop you from dispensing. So if you see here, OK, we'll let you go ahead with it, but we will warn you again next month if you break this rule. Cancel means I've genuinely made a mistake. I'm going to go back and change it. And allow product means do not ask me for this pop-up again for this patient for this drug. So things like test strips, um, some patients may be allowed more than their, their allowance. Um, and if you're constantly getting popped up, it can be annoying. So we give you the option to just ignore it. But if it's things like, um, like high-tech warnings or something along those lines, like things that expire, I would always recommend to say, okay. So then it will ask you again in, when you dispense it next time or in the 28 days. Um, so I'm just going to cancel that. And if you ever need to delete a prescription, we have a delete key down here. The button itself will delete the item. So if you're deleting singular items off a prescription, the small drop down arrow beside it lets you delete the full prescription. And I'm just going to delete that now because I don't need it. Okay. So a few other handy things as well. The filter option up here. It will always bring you to all dispenses. But let's say I want to see, uh, let's say a GP calls and they want to know how many times have they been given warfarin one milligram. All you need to do is highlight the drug that they're asking about. And instead of all dispenses, we go selected drug. That will then show you how many times that patient has been dispensed that drug. Now, if it's something like Prolia, where you don't want to be scrolling through the last six months of dispenses trying to find it, we give you one called product name for that. And all you do is type out the drug. Now, I know that they haven't been given Prolia, so I'm just going to type in Warfin and run. And this is what it will look like. So if you notice, I put in Warfin, so I would get all the multiple different strengths. So I would get my three and my five, whereas my selected drug would only show me the strength that I had highlighted. So this might be a bit better if they need to know how many have they been on, if there was ever a, a dosage change or a, um, uh, any brand change. And also on the topic of Prolia, we will print a Prolia reminder label for you when you are dispensing to somebody who is on Prolia, letting them know when their next injection is due, just in case they keep asking. Um, and you can just stick it on the bag. So to do my different dispenses, we've seen how to run off owings and loans and phases um, but, and what they look like on the PMR, but how do we actually do them? So if I put through a new script, I'll just put through Orphan again. There's my interaction. Um, so if I was to put through an owing, you'll see your dispense quantity is 100. So I'm going to say that I'm not giving anything, but the doctor has written give 100 on the prescription. It will then calculate the owing for you. Straightforward enough. Um, on loan, then, it's just a matter of ticking on loan. Now, um, where is my, let's say if it's emergency supply, for example, if it's an inhaler, um, and or it's somebody who's private and I'm not going to get a prescription. Uh, 
you'll notice if I switch this to drug refund, it automatically changes to emergency supply. And that is something that we usually go through with the pharmacy on what schemes they need emergency supply switched on for and what schemes they need on loan switched on for. The main difference between on loan and emergency supply is emergency supply will give you a form number because we're assuming they're never coming back and we'll also look for a reason. And again, they're usually pre-populated, but double clicking in the blank space will let you create any new ones you need to. Um, okay, and I'll switch that back to GM. So phasing. So for your blisters, um, this was mainly used for anyone who is registered for phasing. Um, so I'll just show you this. So if I tick phasing, and actually this is great, 100 will be done very easily. Um, how many phases are they getting? So I'm just gonna say four in total, which is fairly common, a monthly phase. The three is a, because it's assuming we're doing one right now. So for example, if you had methadone, if I put 27 in there, and as soon as I press enter, you'll notice that it's gone 28 phases and it's split to daily, meaning that it's just gonna give me my dates a day apart. Whereas if I go three, four phases in total, and it's over four weeks. There are other options in here for like bi-weeklies and things if you need to do them, or other if the, it's sporadic or things like that. Reason you usually request a physician, you can just change that in there. And then your start date. Your start date doesn't necessarily have to be the dispense date. It could be the date that, um, like let's say next week, so you're pre-preparing. So let's say I'm doing my blister today, but the first phase doesn't start until Monday of next week. You can then change that. The additional three days will then be based off of this day and not the dispense date. Um, you can add repeats if you need to as well. Um, and then dispense all phases now just gives you all four labels in one go if you are pre-preparing and leaving them on the shelf. Um, but for this example, I won't tick this. So if you're happy with everything there, we just say okay. And now if you see in the bottom right, we have our four phases with our dates seven days apart, our quantities, and then whether they've been printed or not. The main difference between if I had ticked dispense all phases now is it would look like this. And you would not have an ode quantity because we're giving the full 100 straight away. Um, but this is what it will look like mainly. And as you repeat, then it would tick as you go. You can adjust dates if these are falling on Sundays or bank holidays, you just click in and you can manually adjust them. And you can also adjust the quantity if you need to change it to half tablets, for example, it's just 0.5. The only thing we care about is that this total phase quantity matches the total prescribed quantity. That is all we care about. Um, and then if I complete that, and I just jump back, that is what it will look like. One of four and my remaining quantity. I can then just repeat and complete. And you'll notice now, 50, 50, two of four. That's simple. Um, so they're the main types of dispensers. Um, Along the lines of phasing, if you're just splitting labels, for example, um, and you don't need to phase something, you just say you want to split something like a bottle of Gaviscon, you look on the shelf, you only have two 100 mils or something, and they need 200. Um, that is the button here. I'll just, I'll just edit this uh, Nexium, for example. That is the small drop down arrow here beside the next key. And that just allows you to split your labels. So if I click on this button, you can see total quantity 28, but let's say I'm doing seven by four. And that just allows you to split something and you're not really sending information to the PCRS to tell them it's split. So uh, let's say the patient isn't registered for phasing, you could do it this way. Now you will hear me say the Alt key a lot. Um, so you'll see the line underneath the L here, all these straight lines mean that Alt and that letter will do that function. I don't expect you to remember them all, and nobody does really. So if you hold the Alt key down, which is what I'm doing right now, um, if I actually click in, there you go, we will show you what all of the Alt keys are. So for example, I just split the label there, and it was that small drop down arrow beside the next key, but it'll tell you here, if I wanted to do that, it's called free typing the drug label, it's Alt and Y. So if I do Alt and Y, instead of pressing on my little drop down arrow, it's just a lot quicker than having to go click, click, Alt and Y just pops it up straight away. So your keyboard shortcuts are a lot quicker. Um, but again, you would learn them over time. Okay. 
So also as well, um, things that will change between the different systems, your quick keys at the top of your keyboard, your F keys. Um, one that I was asked the last time is just, um, how do I add something to the order? Um, so that is your F7 key. And if I press that, pops up with the drug we want to order. So I'll pick Warfin again. You'll see here the drug we're ordering, how much we're ordering, who we're ordering it from, and when it was last dispensed. And you can adjust this then and add it to the order. Uh, another quick key that is very handy is F11, which is your price lookup. So if I press F11 there, I'll get a pop up here. And it's because I've highlighted the drug in the background, it's going to show me the drug I've highlighted. But for this example, I'm just going to stick with my wharf and just to keep things the same. So if you see here, two price is I want to see how much one pack of 100 is going to cost me. You can adjust this here if you need to. Your price in the middle is your OTC price. So you'll see with your 50% markup, this is how much Warfin over the shelf would cost me, but that, that's not gonna happen. Um, and then your dispensing price on the right here is what includes your dispensing fee markup in broken bulk if you had them. A very handy thing to note is if somebody says, okay, that's the item of one or price of one item, but how much is the entire prescription? If you see in the bottom left, we have a running total, 964, which is the total of the Warfin. If I press next, it's keeping that total. I can then type in my next drug. The five, I press next. The total has now gone to 2039. And that's how much it will cost you fully to dispense it. So just in case they're ever querying that. And again, that was F11. Usually what we do when we arrive um, to train or if you're already arriving to a, a customer that's using TouchStore, they most likely have a strip um, across the top of the the keyboard that explains what all of those buttons are. Okay. Um, so a few pop-ups as well, just we saw the PCRS pop-up, which is Claim Defender. Another pop-up you will see is the LTI pop-up. So your LTI core lists are also built into the background on this system. All we ask you to do is assign the condition to the patient. So what LTI condition do they have? This then allows us to double check the rules so that as you're dispensing to an LTI patient, we will let you know, look, according to what we found on the portal, this isn't covered. Um, and we'll just let you know that to take the guesswork out. So how do I assign an LTI core list to a patient? In the top here, we have the edit button, which brings me our edit F3. Again, F3 is the shortcut for it. But I'm just gonna press the button. It brings us into our patient details, which we would have seen earlier. And of the, the tabs across the top that I'd mentioned, the one that we're concerned with here is medical. And down at the very bottom here, we have LTI conditions, and they're all here. So for example, if I put type two diabetes, you'll notice it populates with the code. So now as I'm dispensing to this patient, anything that is allowed under that will pass and go on to LTI. Anything that isn't, we will switch to drug refund and warn you that we're switching it. You can overwrite this if you need to, but we are going to, we're basically comparing to what the PCRS have. So we can't guarantee that you would then be paid for it. Um, and again, that was just in edit and medical. But if you go onto a patient's file and they are LTI and you don't have a condition assigned, we'll actually pop up and tell you, look, this patient's LTI. There's no condition assigned. Do you want to do it now? If you press OK, it automatically jumps in here for you. So you don't have to navigate there. Um, now, I did a call a while back and we have added a bit of functionality since then. Um, one of them I can actually show you on the call now. So, uh, so one thing that we had, let's say the GP or the patient is going into a hospital and the hospital will ring and they say, can I get a list of medication? You don't want to send a med one because it's got fees and everything on it and it doesn't have dosage codes and things like that. So we just want a list of our medication to send to a hospital. So we've added a functionality just to make that very easy for you. So if I highlight, let's say this is their last prescription, just these three items. So all I've done there is used my up and down keys and pressed enter on the items that I wanted. I can then press control on the keyboard and L. That then will bring up a patient medication list for you to send to the hospital. So that's something that we added in recently. We had a, a good few people looking for it. And that's one thing you will find with TouchStore is we do update quite a lot. Um, 
and it's primarily from feedback from pharmacists and, and what they want added. Um, okay, so that is really the gist of dispensing. I will go and have a quick look at the questions. There are a few other things that if, if I have a little time at the end, if there's not too many questions, I will show you like things like extemporaneous dispenses. You, you might not even get them. Um, you might get one every three months, but I'll just show a quick example of BMX if we have time. Um, and then I'll just have a quick look here, but at least this much, if you do arrive into a pharmacy that is using touch door, you would be able to survive with this much as well. Um, and oh, and one other thing actually, before I go um, and show you the questions, one thing you will have to do is your daily audit um, at the end of the day. So where is that? So in the top right here, we have modules and you have things like your orders, product maintenance, which will allow you to make changes to products. If you notice the GMS code is incorrect or something like that, or you need to add a product yourself, um, your claims, reports, data viewer is just advanced reports. So if you find that there's reports there with columns you need, you need that aren't there, you can actually create your own reports in here. MDS is for your monitor dosage, your nursing home patients. If you do have customer accounts, they'll be stored in here. Pricing, this is just the button instead of pressing F11. Claim analytics is just the blue book that they used to send out to you on the 19th and the 20th of the month with your listings. And um, we just put it in a very easy to read format that shows you what you're paid versus what you should have been paid based off ingredient costs. And that's just loaded. Um, and then your FMD as well. Um, there are a few other things here. I'll, I will, I'll show you my day shortly as well. And there may be a question, there was a question last time about this. So I will go through that, but just to jump back to your daily audit. Report number four. We've named it a little different. It's just called your daily prescription report. It is the second one down here. And clicking on that then will pop up a few more items on the right hand side. So being the date. Um, now mine is just running a bit slow. Okay, mine is just taking a while to load. So what it will show you is just what date you need to run it from. Um, I'm just gonna close out of this and try and run it again. My laptop is on a go slow today. There we go. So your from date, your to date, all and required under schemes, all is everything, um, which you don't usually need for inspections. Um, required will be what you need for inspections. Um, so what you technically need to keep, whereas all will just print everything. If you ever need a query or um, other schemes that are not usually required in a daily prescription report, you can just press all. Um, daily scheme statistics is your profit inquiry. So if you wanted to see how each scheme is doing, that will show you. Control drug reports. Um, your vaccine reports, and you don't need to do anything special for it to populate your vaccine report. It will include the quadrivalent and it will include the nasal spray for kids. Your patient analysis just shows you um, a breakdown. This is different to your um, patient medication because the patient medication doesn't have cost prices. This will have cost prices, and that's the main difference between them. Um, okay, product analysis, just you could run this on a control drug again and see who is on it and how well it's doing. Loans by prescriber is one we usually go through quite a lot with people. Um, if you are a pharmacy that send prescription requests to a GP, um, this is great because you can just leave the prescriber blank, tick prescriber or page per prescriber, and that puts uh, a doctor per page. So that means you can basically, they're ready to send straight away as soon as you print it. And it'll just show you the name of the GP, the name of the pharmacy, and what patients you're missing prescriptions for. And it's one we go through quite a lot. Your hardship then. So this is uh, your hardship claim report. So let's see if I, do I have any there that I can show you? I don't, okay. So this is just print ready. Uh, all you need to do is stamp it and away it goes. It's an exact template of what the hardship claim report needs to be for any of your hardship patients. Patient care fee is your high tech. So claiming your care fees. And what we do is we split that up into three sections. So it's the patients you're getting the full fee for, so you're 60, 52. Patients who are still within that continuation three month period, and then patients who have just fallen outside of it. And we will show you that in the report. Um, 
there is, we've added a section to the claims. Um, now, I don't think I'll be able to show that, but we basically now automatically generate the next not dispense fee for you. All we need you to do is press the button in the claims that says you are requesting it and that you're happy for us to do it. it we will then look at your data, find people who are eligible for the fee, and it will automatically dispense the next fee for you. Just to save you having to go through every single one of them, that information is very easily accessed by us. Um, so we just run it for you. It saves you a ton of time. And then your med one. If you find that there's people um, that are unsure of the dosages, you can print them here. And that's just every dosage code you have active in the system if you do have some strange ones that people are, are struggling to get their hand of. Um, okay. And now just what I mentioned earlier about my day. And especially, this is definitely going to be more prevalent for people on the new Owings legislation if you're just looking to tidy up your Owings a small bit. Um, My Day is like a personal calendar, but it also interrogates your system. So if you see, I have things like prescriptions due. So if I had Mark patients as regular patients and they had prescriptions that are due in, in 28 days or within the dates that I have specified, they would all show up here. And what they look like, um, I'll just bring up my loans here is the patient's name. And this little icon here will actually let you jump to the patient's file. So it just makes things handier for you. And if I hadn't to run off that owing, they would be showing in here. And I could jump to the patient's file and then run off the owing. So this section here, especially your old dispenses, um, will be great for anyone that is on the new legislation. So it's just a handy way of tracking everyone owed rather than having to run an owed items report or something along those lines. This is just a lot easier to action because it's instant. Um, okay, so that is basically everything from me. I'm just going to jump back and have a quick look at the questions. Uh, so we only have a few. That's great. So I will go through. Um, before you input a new patient, should you do an advanced search to check patients that haven't visited in the past six months? Usually we recommend that, yes, but only if you're unsure. Usually people will be able to tell, okay, I've never seen this person before, and then as you entered, it's fine. It's not the end of the world if you don't do an advanced search. So what they're asking is if you search from up here and they don't show, should you go here and look in all patients? Usually we train that you do just to be on the safe side. Um, but worst case scenario, if you didn't, you can always merge them after. Um, but yes, great question. Can you allow Dr. IMC medical counselor numbers to be stored and linked to the doctor list? So if I go to the doctor at the top, press on my cog, which brings me to my doctor maintenance screen. I then edit the doctor or insert a new one if I need to. And then we keep the statutory codes down here if you need to enter them. So I hope that answers that. Um, but again, if any of them have, when the doctors are filling out their forms and the GP register, as long as they put in their statutory codes, they will automatically be there anyway, because um, that's where we pull our doctor file from. Can you undo allow product where someone clicks allow product instead of? You can. Um, you can actually just request us to do that. Um, it's the quickest way. So usually if you find that there are products that people have said allow um, or rules that they're Let's say they accidentally said allow product when they should have said OK. Um, I actually think, and yeah, I won't be able to show you that here. There is a setting on the back office for that. That is a completely separate section. So you could go to your product maintenance there and remove it for that product. Uh, but I think, let me see, actually, do I have it set here? Um, see, now, OK, if I show you here. So if you can see the screen, I'm just going to go for that question again. Just asked if somebody, let's say, you had the test strip example I gave you, um, and they accidentally said, yeah, that's fine, but they actually meant it for somebody else. Um, you can then go in here into the patient's details, so the patient that they have incorrectly said this on, and go to allow products or allowed products. That would then have a list of what they have said. You can then just remove them if you need to. Um, so I hope that answers that. And again, the reason why I, I'm not going through the back office because that's a completely separate section. If there is any interest in that, if you need any training around this side. So for example, like claims. Um, now I know I mentioned this last time, it's just because there's so many pop-ups with the PCRS circulars, LTI core lists and things like that, and the way the system is built, the claims training is very, very short. It's only about 10 minutes long because um, 
the system you're basically verifying as you're dispensing. So there's very rarely any mistakes when it comes to sending the claim. And because you've all the hard work done already. And then some pharmacies phase methadone. A problem is when a patient missed their dose, can you cancel parts of the phasing? You can, of course. So if I go, I'm just going to edit this warfarin. Phasing. So you have two options here. We have delete and delete all. Delete will just delete one record of it and delete all will delete everything. And that's basically it. The other option then is we usually find that if it's a big mess up, um, like let's say they're doing half supervised and they're doing half takeaway and somebody puts it all through as phased or something incorrectly, you can just untick phasing and rephase it and the system will just regenerate everything how you want it. It's just usually a lot quicker rather than having to go click, change date, click, change date, click and the whole way through it. And that can get messy. But if you need to delete records, you can. So delete and delete all. Delete, delete so one row that you've highlighted. Delete all deletes absolutely everything. And so lets you start fresh. I'll just recomplete that. Um, so saying that there's not too many questions, I'll just go through the extemp really quick because you may get landed with one as you arrive in. I know I say you usually get one every three months, but who knows, you may be landed with one straight away. So if I go with a new script or alt and I, You'll notice there's an extemp button at the bottom here, or Alt and E, because the line is underneath the E. And that brings up our extemporaneous screen. So depending on what type of extemp it is, we have a different options here. So if I go oral medication, for example, and then the pricing. So the reason why we give you so many options, and I think it's because I'm in under GM now, you'll notice I only have a couple, like six options there. Whereas if I switch this to drug refund, and now I do extemp, I'm going to have much more options because the price will change dramatically based on the size of the extemp, whereas GM will be covered. So for example, if I do a mixture, at the moment I'm saying 100 mil, which is 10 euro. If I change this to 300, that jumps by another 10 euro. So it's just that, and that'll be under DR because they're paying full whack for it. So for this example, I'll do BMX, uh, if I can remember what goes in it. Um, so I'll just do my cough syrup. You then adjust your quantity. So I entered my first ingredient here, and then I put in the ratio. Uh, I'll just leave it at 125 for this example. And then you put in the batch and expiry of the benelin. I then go with my lidocaine, uh, 2%. And again, just like your patient search, you don't have to type out lidocaine, the full thing. You can be as brief as you want. You'll see that percent sign pop up to help you out. Um, and I'll go with my 10 ampules and I'll just say two, for example. And then I'll go with my final ingredient. Oh, close. Uh, my final ingredient here, my Maalox. And we'll go with the 250 ml again, just for this example. So once you get to the end, you've entered all your ingredients. You're happy with what you, the type of extent you've picked. You put in your batch and your expiry. It'll give you your total cost of the extent. The reason why we look for a batch and expiry in here is because if you ever need to repeat the extemp, um, we will actually just ask you for the batch and expiry the next time. It will remember everything. Um, so you don't have to come back and enter in everything brand new again. You'll also notice as soon as I press OK here, we'll shorten the name so that the PCRS are happy. We won't change it to BMX mouthwash. We actually leave the ingredients in the product name so that they won't reject for that. But we also populate with the correct code, the GMS code here in the bottom right. So that saves you another task. Um, and then I can just put in my dosage and complete as normal. Heating then, all it does is it'll pop up with that little screen that came up earlier, and it just has a blank batch and expiry.